why are they allowed to sell the product before they've been vetted to protect us? So number one would be, please, we need to put people on this. We need the, the power of the number of people. Number one, I would ask them to create a specific division in the FDA that really tracks regenerative and biologic medicine and first and foremost uh, um, uh, vets the labs that are processing these products so that they can't sell them until the lab has been vetted to make sure that there's no uh, infectious agents in there for sterility control, for um, all of the different processing of the cells to make sure that we're not uh, transmitting any kind of genetic, uh, dangerous genetic tissues, etc. cetera. Um, that's, that's where it has to start. It has to start at the biologics, the processing lab, because if you don't have a good product, all the other stuff falls, right? And so here we have thousands now, probably a couple thousand by now, as of 2021, two years ago now, March 2021, there were 1,480 uh, programs selling stem cells in the United States. I'm sure two years later, it's closer to 2,000. They're all registered with the FDA, but only a fraction of them are actually vetted. Why are they allowed to sell the product before they've been vetted to protect us? So number one would be, please, we need to put people on this. We need the, the power of the number of people. You know, the argument is always, there's not enough manpower uh, or per person power, to be politically correct, uh, to, to go out there and visit all of these labs. Well, this is life-changing therapy. Why wouldn't there be? Why wouldn't it be part of this process? Okay, so that's first and foremost. Uh, beyond that, I would beg them to really look at what they're talking about when they maintain this, this legislation, that minimal manipulation of a cell product. If some processing lab can prove, like the one in Panama has proven, Neil has done exhaustive research to prove the safety of these products, then why wouldn't we permit, be permitted to start applying those, but we're limited by that minimal manipulation guideline? See, I would say lift that in safe situations, obviously not to endanger patients. I don't want uh, um, stem cells uh, creating tumors in people, but we also know, and over 40 years of history of data in other countries has shown that postnatally derived cells, not embryonic, not fetal, that's old, okay? Postnatally de derived stem cells cannot create cancer. Now, that's not to say if somebody has an occult cancer in them that we don't know about, those things couldn't make the cancer grow. We don't know about that. Obviously, it could. These are growth factors that are being released. But barring that unique situation, we know that it can't cause cancer. That's the biggest risk that patients are always asking me. Can I get cancer from this? So, so why do we still have that rule in place? Why? It doesn't make sense if we can also do the studies that prove the safety of this. And then, what is a drug versus what is a biologic? Now the FDA is calling, is, is qualifying exosomes as a, as a drug, okay? So that means they can legislate it. Okay, fine, if you wanna call it a drug and they can make it an off-the-shelf product, it's because it can be monetized. How can, how can a biologic agent from somebody be monetized? You know, but one off the shelf, can be. And so I have all sorts of questions that I, I won't get in, into great detail about, about the politics behind it and the money that drives it. Um, at the end of the day, what are we here for? We're here to help patients. That's what we're really here for. I'm not here to, sure, my bank account can be padded, but that's not what it, what it is. And so we have to have that uh, as primary or primary focus, and we've lost sight of that.